Hello, thanks for being in a new video. This time we're going to talk about the artificial intelligence that Xiaomi integrates into several of its recent devices. Let's get started. Pay close attention because Xiaomi doesn't have such a clear implementation in the case of its artificial intelligence functions. So there are some of them available on some devices, some of them available on others. Possibly as they are updated will be a little more homogeneous catalog of Xiaomi functions. But for now, pay attention to the full list and in the review of each device, I will tell you if you have the full suite or is missing. Uh, some option. Several of these functions are quite useful, although most of them require internet connection. Uh, let's start with some text focused functions. For example, within the notes application, you have an option to automatically summarize the note, although it does not work with very long text. And another disadvantage is that you always need an internet connection for this. Tool to work. Notice that the button that says there appears and here are the options. If we select summary, it will take a few seconds and finally it will give us a small summary. But I, uh, I insist that it is not able to do it if the text is very long. You can also format the note to add some bullets or some titles so that your note is more readable. But again, it will not be able to do it if the text is too long. Also note that in this case, for example, it is not adding bullets or anything like that, but simply formatting the text slightly differently. We will also find the correction options with artificial intelligence to correct any type of spelling mistake. Although again, it will not be able to do it if the text is too long, but it will not be able to do it if the text is too long. It is not able to do it with very long text. So the functions exist, but in practical life, I think they are not so useful. Finally, there is the translation function with artificial intelligence, but again, the same thing happens. In order not to be so repetitive, I want to emphasize that all the functions I am mentioning require internet connection, so it is not such an advanced implementation of artificial intelligence. I notice, for example, that in the photo editor, it includes an artificial intelligence section where you can expand the image. It won't be such a simple expansion and you choose the size you want it to be. So notice that once you're ready, you click start and through generative artificial intelligence, it will try to imagine what would be in these empty areas so it can fill it in. It takes it a few seconds and notice that the result can be quite convincing. It looked like this before and like this. You see later. There are also some other times where the result looks too fake, so it can become very variable. Note that within the artificial intelligence tools, there is also an eraser in standard mode and pro mode. The pro mode is the one that requires internet connection and it is also going to be more advanced because of the generative artificial intelligence. So it also requires some time for you to download the tool. And now note that you can manually select the things you want to erase, or you can also choose to intelligently detect objects, lines, or people. In this case, I'm going to select people and I'm going to tap on this person, although it detected an additional area that is not a person. But either way, we're going to try to make it work with this setting. Then we wait a little bit of time and again, it will try to imagine what would be behind these people so that the image will can be automatically filled in. And note that there is also another option to change the sky. This is quite interesting because you can even put clouds or remove clouds. It all depends on what settings you choose. These presets must be downloaded, so it takes a few seconds to apply them. But it's interesting also to edit your photos if you didn't like how the sky looked when you took your photo. I am now using the Poco X7 Pro where Xiaomi has other AI options that are focused on removing reflections. Uh, again, it will be through the uh, AI tab where this option appears. Notice that it will do an analysis to try to eliminate the reflections that appear when you take pictures behind glass. For example, in this case, we took the picture from inside the car, so you can see how it eliminates these reflections. Whenever you take pictures through glass, you can get to generate quite annoying reflections. And in this case, I think it removes it well enough. I wouldn't say 100%, but it does help to improve your photography quite a bit. Now I'm using the Xiaomi T14 Pro to show you another of the artificial intelligence features coming from Xiaomi, which is called Portrait with AI. For this feature, the device is going to ask you for at least 25 pictures of you so that the artificial intelligence be trained. Once you have trained the artificial intelligence, you just have to choose the option to create more portraits. And now you just have to write a text prompt for the artificial intelligence to imagine the result. 
for example, we are going to write something here and now we're going to press the create button and obviously it is going to take a few seconds. In fact, you should know that the training of the artificial intelligence does take quite a long time. By default, it tells you two hours later. I'm not sure if it took two hours, but I'm sure it's going to take the training. But after the training, the generation of the images or the artificial photographs doesn't take that long. In this case, you yourself are seeing that it is taking more or less about 30 seconds to finally generate the results. Well, I must say that it already took more than those estimated 30 seconds because every time it is about to finish it adds another 10 seconds so it takes its time. But let's wait a little longer to see the results and that's it. In fact in this case it only generated one which actually came out quite well. In this case, you could save it perfectly, and as you see, the other results simply say try again, so again we would have to wait, but at least it looks like something interesting. And if you save the image, notice that it will have a watermark that says generated by artificial intelligence, but the results actually look interesting. In some cases, it will look a little more realistic, in other cases much more artificial, but as I said, it will depend on your creativity, also on, the, um, on what you want to put in the text prompt. The result can also vary depending on the quality of the selfies you have taken and in different poses. So you can have enough training to achieve this kind of results. Inside the voice recorder you will also find artificial intelligence functions. Notice that if you have a long enough recording, you can transcribe it to text as well. In fact, it can recognize if there are several people talking. And note that it also has a button to summarize the recording you have made, although it will also be limited to a short length but it can be useful when trying to summarize a meeting or something similar. In fact, also note that it is able to translate the text, so there are three, transcription, translation, and uh, summary. It also integrates the interpreter with artificial intelligence and notes that would allow you a face-to-face -face translation or translate the audio of the calls that already showed you a moment ago. And to access this interpreter, you must slide the list of system controls and then this icon will appear. And finally, you can start the translation, although it works like any other translator. And note that it also includes an option to have real-time subtitles of whatever you are watching. You can use it to transcribe your photos through your device, or even what you're listening to in real life using the microphones on this cell phone. It can simply do a transcription, or it can also do the translation, depending on how you have configured this little box. To activate the subtitles by artificial intelligence, you have to press this button that's in the quick settings panel. And as I say, you just have to configure the necessary options to be able to start the translation as you want it. So, what do you think? I really think it is a good suite of options for users to enjoy, although as I said, in this case quite limited by internet connection issues and several text functions also have a certain character limit that make it not so practical in real life. But let me know in the comments your opinion. I think where it stands out the most is in photo editing, where it incorporates several new features. For the moment, we have reached the end of this video. If you liked it, you know you can let me know and I'll see you next time.